We're going to look at a verse in the book of Acts, the 17th verse, in just a minute. You know, as we uh, are, are in a unique time, how many know that that's true? We're, if, if you're around and you get any kind of news feed, we're living in times that we've not seen before. Our nation hasn't seen before. And I just believe it's the signs of the times. Uh, partially but you know the signs of the times uh, can be um, managed differently if we are in faith versus if we just think like a victim we cannot think like a victim we have to think like a victor we have to think like champions and not chumps the example of it was the difference between David and King Saul King Saul was supposed to be in charge but he was in he was terrified along with his men and, didn't, and he didn't have it on the inside of him. And David came in, another set of rules, another set of, of ideals inside of him. And he challenged that Goliath. Goliath was a big man, but he had a, an army behind him. And their timidity and their fear would have caused them to be defeated. But he rose up. He took out the, the big voice, and the rest of them took off. I, I don't think that principle is vanished i believe the church is meant to be glorious without spot or wrinkle or any such thing i believe that when jesus said be salt and light he didn't mean that we'd be salt and light in a cupboard under a bushel i believe he says i want you to change the world i want you to infect the world and you have to be prompted to do that so the answer for the turmoil that's in our world is is going to come from the church now, now listen, because there's a lot of people, God, do something. When's, it's like God's going to send a tornado. I, I think God can. But I think there's too much evidence in the scripture that says, I want you to stand up. I want you to speak to the mountain. I want you to keep your believing. And here we are, we're just kind of observing. And God didn't want us to observe. He wants us to go to the other side like Jesus told the disciples. He wants us to do something. For you to do that, you can't do it just because of your own creativity, but because we got somebody living on the inside of us every day of our life. But we got to stir that gift up and stay engaged with that, with that person of the Holy Spirit. Now, as a whole, overall, where we have been, the church has been sleeping. We're waiting for somebody else to do it. We're, we're, we're waiting for that, the preacher to give us the sermon that, you know, the walls are going to come down. You know, when the walls came down in Jericho, it was everybody marching around that wall. And when it came to the, to the last day, it, the, the, they all lifted up their voice and they shouted before the walls came down. There's principle there. The church has got to be doing some things. We're kind of like, like, like to Sister Prayer Warrior and, and, and Brother Faithful to take care of those things. And it's up to each of us. Often the Bible talks to us as the body of Christ. So, you know, you, you, you can make it if one of your kidneys isn't working right, one of your lungs isn't working right. You can make it if your heart isn't pumping at, at, at the normal rate. But when you take enough of the system out, you handicap enough of the organs and, and the body parts then that body sooner than later will fail. I, th I, I don't think the enemy has any chance if the church would be the church. But we just have to be motivated to do that. So, you know, wh what is a great motivator in our lives? Pain is a great motivator. You know, if you don't have any food, you're going to start searching and scratching and looking and asking. You know, if you get hurting enough, you're going to cry out to somebody. You ever been in such gruesome pain? They say, I got to, where's a help? Where's a doctor? Where's a nurse? Well, you know, who's got some dope? Or who's got some drugs? Something. When you, pain's a motivator. Poverty is a motivator. And I tell you, oppression is a motivator. How oppressed do we have to be? How far does this stuff got to go? Before we can't do what we can do. Right now, I, I talked to, to a, uh, a pastor in another country, I'll just say that, and one of the provinces, I'll say that, in this country, that the government said, people over 50 cannot go to church. 
they're saying the same thing. People that go to that church under 50, they cannot, they cannot sing. And they cannot take communion. Today. Now, are we just going to sleep and let that thing continue to roll on us? Because I'm telling you, it will go so far to where you say, you are not. They did it already. But a bunch of radicals said, we are going to go to church no matter what. Cuff me. Frog walk me to the, to the cell. But I am going to serve God. Amen. Now, I got a little edge on me nowadays. Because I have to have. The just doesn't live by ideals. We live by faith. And you know, in the Old Testament, faith carried a sword. Now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not promoting violence, but I am. The spiritual violent take it by force. We're going to move spiritual things back by being spiritual, spiritually active. The church is the answer, not more legislation. They keep passing more laws, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not kill. They keep passing more no-kill laws, but they still kill. Because the answer isn't on laws, the answer is God's people. Are you with me, church? We have to be motivated. We have to have drive on the inside of us. That, you know, we'll take the blessings. We've had church, I mean, I, I grew up in this. And we preach faith for healing. We preach faith for promotion, jobs, and increases. God, help us. Give, give us a home. Give, give me a, 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 a mate. We've had faith for all of the, the niceties of life. But I think we're to this point. We have to release our faith for our nation. And I don't, I don't talk about protesting. I'm not talking about just writing on Facebook. I'm talking about doing something in the spirit. We got to know how to bring Goliath down. The, 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 the around us is anarchy. You know, the, the Marxist lives matter. That stuff's out there. You're not going to do this. And, the, and, and they're burning city blocks. They're burning down commercial stores. But if we don't do something, they're going to do that to the churches. I don't, I, I, I'm not a downer preacher. But I know what the Spirit of God's telling me to do. And, and, and we don't have to be frightened. Perfect love casts out fear. We do not have to be terrified. We should, fear should not be our motivating factor. It should be God put us in this nation. He built this nation for a reason. And it's to be able to raise up our kids in an atmosphere that they don't have to be afraid of walking down the street. They don't have to be afraid of going to school. Or you just... Not I'm going to go to school. We we got to know how to turn this boat around. It's it's going to come but speaking to the mountain. It's going to come. It's spiritual application. It's spiritual um, spiritual dynamics. Many many people are, are have a sense right now of hopelessness. I don't know what to do. Well, that's what God's word does. It tells us what to do. We feel hopeless. We feel vulnerable. We often feel a victim. I refuse to feel like a victim. I am going to act like a soldier that the Bible tells me to act like. It talks about being soldiers, principles. Farmer, principles. Athlete, it's a principle. The body of Christ, all these things are principles of what we are. We're wonderfully made. We got many parts, many, many uh, uh, opportunities, many possibilities. But if we don't engage that, we're going to be one day thinking like, how do we get out of this country? Let's go to the new land. Because that's exactly what happened in England when those first uh, pilgrims came to our land. Are you with me, church? I, I'm, not, I'm not preaching down in fear to you. I'm telling you, you've got to get up. You've got to know where your sword is, and you've got to know what your armor is. The Bible talks about armor for a reason. And if we don't have it on, we're going to be in trouble. We've got to use our faith. We've got to use... Uh, our, our spiritual uh, strength. Be strong in the Lord and the power of might that you could stand against the wiles of the devil. Some of those wiles is, is financial. 
Uh, we've been there. I've been there. Had to overcome a financial attack, a financial uh, mountain. We used our faith on that. Our same faith can come up against this thing that's wanting to overtake our nation and our computer. I, I'm grateful for the place that we are in now, but I'm telling you, if we don't stand strong, that stuff is going to overtake us. Number one is we got, like Miss Linda was talking about, we got to take care of this virus stuff. You speak to that. Get out of town. Go, go to the wilderness. Nobody's at. You got to have enough tenacity that you're not afraid to speak to that mountain. You got to have enough spiritual responsibility that we're the keepers. Spiritual keep. We have to have that. Amen. Are you with me, church? Yeah. So the church alive, the church living in their faith, alert, the church spiritually vibrant, we can make a difference. How many believe that today? Yeah. Yeah. But we have to do it. Is it work? Absolutely it's work. Man, it's strenuous. You got to get up, get out of bed. You got to do something besides watch Desperate Housewives. You know, naked and afraid. You know those, those shows. I haven't seen any of it. Anyway, let's look at this book, the book of Acts. I said that first. I want to look at the 17th chapter, and here's what it was. They was uh, in Acts in 17. The church was moving, and they were they were evangelizing. They were outside of, of Jerusalem. They were outside of Israel, and they were doing some things, and and it made people mad. Listen, if you're doing the work of the Lord, people's going to get healed, and there's going to be persecutions. Don't be so timid and quiet that, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be persecuted. If they do persecute you, you got the armor of God on. You got the name of Jesus, and you got to be able to say, no, you back off. I'm not backing off. Like the, like, like the prophet said to Gehazi, open his eyes, God. He can see the hills. There's more for us than there are for them. I'm telling you, we got more angels working on our side, more power of the Holy Spirit on our side than any activist and, and anarchist has in our world. Be strong in the Lord, church. Not, not positioned. I know people that go to, to, to uh, friends of our family that this, their son went to this school and he got a theological degree. And he can read Greek, and he can do all these manuscripts and all these kinds of things. But he does not move one mountain. He's so theological. Listen, I'm not against theology and studying, being deep in those things. But if you have those things without faith, what good are we? What good are we? Look, look what it says in Acts. And, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself there. Acts in 17, speaking about this church that's stirring things up. In uh, 17 in verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren to the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come here also. Who's he talking about? The church that is inspired and motivated, full of the Spirit of God, not full of religion, not full of, well, let's let somebody else do it. Let's let somebody else pray. Let's let somebody else give. Let's just take, I had a friend. A family friend. I got this is a different one. Young, he went into a restaurant and um, sat down, ordered a nice meal by himself. Nice meal. He ate it. Watched for the attendants to go off somewhere. Snuck out without paying. And they caught him. He put him in jail. You know, he 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 wasn't. He was just stupid. How I many know stupid kind of is out there? Anyway, put him in jail overnight. His parents had to come out. Real embarrassing for the, for the teenage kid like that. But friends, there's a lot of people coasting in the church today. They want the blessings. They want the devil away. They want the sickness gone. They want somebody else to do the praying, get the anointing, and lay on them. But I'm telling you what, each one of us has a responsibility to do our part. Part of your part is praying. Part of your part is serving. No, no freeloaders. No freeloaders. We've had so many of them that, that we aren't doing what we're called to do. And that way the church is weakened. Well, there wasn't a lot of amens on that one, Pat. I'm just telling you. In, in Revelations 3, 15, 16, I'm, I want us to read that. Because this verse was real instrumental to me at one time. I was young um, uh, and... 
and I'd went to church, I kind of backslid. You know, I don't know how you kind of backslide. I'm just trying to paint my picture a little softer than it really was. I backslid. And, just, and, and again, I wasn't out selling drugs, and I wasn't out robbing banks, and I wasn't buying dinner and running out. It wasn't me. But, um, and and in, I, at night, when I was backslid, the Spirit of God would be around me. He never leaves you, never forsakes you. And man, I tell you what, it was tough going to sleep at night because he was just reminding me, you're not where you're supposed to be. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I tell you, it was tough. And then this verse one night, what, what, sometimes I would turn the radio on because I couldn't go to sleep. So, and you know, in Hood River, where I was raised, you know, there's not many radio stations that come there. They go other places. But so you, have, you just kind of scan the radio stations to try to find something to occupy your mind until your body gives up and goes to sleep. And anyway, um, I would always seem to find religious stations. Something there going on. And then one night, you know, you'd hear they said, listen to him for a while. I said, oh, God, conviction. And one night, somebody, whoever it was, used this. Um, verse 15. We'll look at 15 and 16. It says, I know your works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew or vomit you out of my mouth. Man, that, that came over the radio, and it like was a, like, like a sword in my soul. And it just went past conviction. It came to the point, it says, I'm, I'm telling you, you better get right, and you better get right soon. You know, God will talk to you like that. You need, you, you need to be sensitive to the Lord talking to you like that. You need to be right with God. You know, there's a lot of church people that like the feel, the blanket of, of, of a good church. But there's nothing like, there's nothing like you being in perfect harmony with God. See, we have a lot of lukewarm going around. It's kind of like an infection. And, 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 and wait a minute, you're, you're okay. You're tepid. You're in the middle. Fence rider. And, and, and now's the time that we cannot be fence riders. There was a time in our nation when, it, when even the most carnal people, they, they would love Christmas, they would love Easter, and they would respect that. We're past that. There's a vehement uh, drive to be against anything that has a form of godliness. It's, and it's obvious it's getting worse. That's not the it of the story. The story is that if the church rises up, the church is far more powerful than anarchy. Far more. More for us than there are for them. But we got to stir that up. God told, again, Timothy, or, or Paul told Timothy, stir up your gift within you. Stop being lukewarm. Stop being a fence rider. Stop being, trying to be, have, playing all the game, the whole world deal. We got to have that fire that's burning on the inside of us. Lukewarm. That word, that word, you know, Revelation 3.16, I know exactly what it says every day of my life. Why? It brought me out of, out of being confused and in darkness and on a place that the devil was just beating the hell out of me. I mean, it's a little crass word, but I want my point to be clear. Give no place to the devil. I gave him a lot of place. And it didn't cost me forever, but it did. It did slow my roll down. Another place that we want to look at 2 Timothy. I'm watching my time. 2 Timothy. And again, see, I, I'm just not preaching and wanting to preach just things to just be preaching. I believe this church can make a huge difference in our state and our city. Just this, we're, we're a little church. I believe we can put a dent in the devil, but we got to have passion, we got to have fire. We've got to have purpose. We've got to have consistency. Listen, don't, let's not get to the place. It's so painful, so hideous, so wrong that we cry out to God then. We don't have to wait to then. Now is the day of salvation. 
Now is when we keep our armor strong and our, and our blade sharp. Yes, church? Look at this, 2 Timothy. We know this one. It's famous part, 2 Timothy 3. It says, in the last days, there's perilous times. Is any of that out there? I think we're seeing perilous in our own backyard like never. In my life. Men shall be lovers of their selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Fifth verse is the verse. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Can we tell the difference between these people that got all these practices in their life, but they're in a form of godliness? That's what it says. We got to know who your warrior is. Do you want to go into battle with somebody that doesn't have their armor on? Do you want to go into the foxhole where real bullets are being thrown without somebody that's got fight in them? You want somebody that's cowering at the shells? I, I want to go to somebody that says, let's go. So you got to have fight on the inside of you. You got to have burn on the inside of you. You got to have this, uh, uh, this I, I just refuse it. You know, I, 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 I get a little edgy sometimes. And, 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 but I don't want to be without an edge. I mean, I don't want to be rude. My wife is always saying, back off, back off. Thank God for Miss Linda. So I, I try to reel it back in and put, you know, something softer. But you know what? I don't want, I don't, I don't want to be pushed over by the devil. I want, when I see some injustice, I want, to be, I want to be able to run to the action. Instead of, do I do it? Do I do it not? I don't want to put that stuff on when you're in the middle of the war. Are you with me, church? Yeah. We don't want to have a form of godliness. Denying the power. Oh, the Holy Spirit's this and that and here and there. You don't have to do this. And we don't want to offend nobody. I tell you, there's some people that need to be offended. Because is the devil taking over? Has the church done its job? I don't think so. And again, I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just saying, you got to first, you got to first talk to God about this. Where am I, God? Am I doing my job? You know, we had 40 years celebration. It was a wonderful weekend last week. But you know, not every week is a 40-year celebration. Come around Monday morning, you got to have some fight on because there's a thief out there that's killing and stealing and destroying. And I don't want that in my wheelhouse. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 says, Who is he that overcomes the world? Are we world overcomers or are we, world, are we overcome by the world? I'm trying to get me a different translation here. It says in the NIV, that verse 4 and 5, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. You need that deep in your gears. I'm an overcomer. And something comes up against you that ain't right, that you know isn't right, you say, that ain't right. I'm not taking that. I'm, and, and I'm talking about spirits. All this stuff going on, it's not right. It's something inside of you tells you, pulling over statues is not right. It's just wrong. And I want a bit of irritation inside me when I see that. And I'm not going to go shoot nobody. I'm not going to go out there and fist fight anybody. But it does make me speak to the mountain. That's where everybody starts. You've got to have fight on the inside of you. You gotta have this, that's just not right. We're not going to put up with that. Now, you, you, you don't have a leader. A home does not have a leader. If they don't have that, we got a line somewhere. We're not going to put up with that. And we've got to have that as a nation. We're not going to put up with that. I curse that in Jesus' name. It's anarchy. It's Marxism. That's exactly what happened in Russia when they killed the czars. They killed them. They killed the leaders. People that just had no... And, and now look what's going on. The anti-God. Nobody's getting saved. It goes on and says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. 
This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That would be us. So inside of you, you've got to have this thing about you that says, I am an overcomer, not the overcome. I'm just not going to accept it. I would rather die fighting than I would die accepting what the enemy. You know, it's, it's always bothered me. You get thousands and thousands and thousands of Jews put in this stink hole concentration camp. And they have a few guards with guns around them. And they line them up every day and take them to the gas chamber and exterminate them. And they didn't do anything. I mean, they're going to die anyways. Why not charge the guys with the guns? If you're going to die, let's die fighting for the cause that I believe in and my eternity is settled. I'm not looking for a death wish, but I am practicing the overcoming spirit that we have to have. And would you die for your family? Some people wouldn't. I'm telling you. They wouldn't. But you've got to have that fight on the inside of you. You lay your life down for a, a greater cause than this earth. While we're here, we're doing it right. In Jesus' name. We have, we have to have that working on the inside of us. Moses, put, God put his finger on him and says, I want you to go to Pharaoh. I was talking with Nick yesterday about this. I want you to go to Pharaoh, and I want you to say, let my people go. They were, the, they were the machine. They were the workhorse. They were the brick makers. They were the one that did all the lifting while they just sit and watched them. And God says, you guys are not supposed to be here any longer. So Moses went in there, him and his brother, said, let my people go. And you know, Pharaoh was the most powerful uh, politician on the planet at that time. He went in there with a boldness and an authority. And you know, Pharaoh could have killed him, but he never did. Why wouldn't he? Why couldn't he? See, God positioned him and gave him a mouth and gave him authority. He was at the right place at the right time. And I'm telling you, when you're doing the right thing at the right place at the right time, you're obeying God. I'm telling you, there's something about you. There's a shield about you. There's a force field, if you will. And it's called the anointing. It's called the presence of God. You just got to have enough guts to say, God, show me my spot. I'm not telling you you're the president of the United States, but I am telling you, you are essential where you are. You don't have to be a bully. You don't have to be rebellious. You don't have to be bombastic and rude, but you do have to. We don't do that. We don't do that. I'm, you know, when I was a child, I, put, I, I did childish things, but when I became a man, I put off childish things. When I was a sinner, I did sinner things. But when I became a believer, I put off sinner things. I put off weak things. Be strong in the Lord doesn't mean you're strong just, you know, when the, when the uh, you know, fire alarm goes off. You're strong every day of your life, and you better be thinking that way in my mind. I think if the church was doing what the church is supposed to be doing, the enemy would be far less strong and aggressive. Our nation was built upon principles that lasted for, for decades and decades and decades. But I think the church went to sleep, didn't have standards, and now they're pulling out everything. They started with prayer. They started with prayer in the schools. They took the Bible out. I can remember a teacher is young. I can remember a Bible on my teacher's desk. You won't find that today. <laughs> I don't think it's right. But something happened that another spirit took over. And I think it was a church that didn't first pray. And you can do all of giving a food away. We give food. We reach kids. We have to shelve that. And all, all the different things that we do. But if we don't do it that has the anointing and the power of God behind it, then it's all a form of godliness. But we've got to have the power. Are you with me, church? power of God is on the inside of you. The same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. 
And he quickens the mortal body by the spirit that dwells within you. It's in Romans 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I just don't, I just don't think we're releasing that. When you say, let's go do something for God. Let's build something in the kingdom of God. Oh, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. You need time for that. Because someday you may just be in a place where you can't be as free as you used to be. I don't want that. I'm not prophesying that. But you don't have to be prophet to, prophet to see that darkness is gaining too much headway. You know, we, we, we must pray for our nation. We must pray for our president. We must pray for the Supreme Court. We must pray for the Senate and the Congress. And if they do not, if they are in opposition to God, they need to be out. Amen. Now, if this is a little aggressive for you, that's all I got. That's what we got. We're born for this, friends. We're born to be salt and light. Salt always affects dark. Or salt always affects darkness. The, the poison, the uh, uh, decay. Light always moves darkness out. You got to have. We got to be serious about this. Now is time to be serious. We because we weren't serious. Are you with me, church? It's important. In First John, I won't go there because of time. First John, two twenty and twenty seven says this, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you don't need anybody to teach you that, but you do have to know it. Find that gift of God that's on the inside of you. Work that gift of God on the inside of you. Are you with me, church? Let's pray. God, today, I just pray that you put enthusiasm, that you put force, you put life, you put power to work on. Don't leave us lukewarm. Bring conviction on our lives to be the ones that are the doers and not just the hearers. Help us to be the ones that don't come to the restaurant and eat and run. But God, we're fed and we do. We're doers of your words. Help us, God, ones that don't know the principle of prayer but don't pray. We have the principle of giving but we don't give. We give cheap. We give half. We give a third. We don't obey. We want the power when the trouble comes. But when it comes time for us to do our part, God, we got, we got, we got to be found in the mix. Well, I pray for conviction on our church, conviction on the believers. The life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God. I pray that. You're here. Ours are Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You, and I want everybody looking on the inside of themselves. Are, are, you, are you doing your part? I, I, I don't have to bring conviction. The, the Holy Spirit, that's His job. But are you doing your job? Are you, have you given everything you can because He gave everything He has? Or are you letting yourself slide? You're letting the world's ways steal away your, your position, your anointing, your office. God, I pray. When did the devil have supremacy over God, over God's people, over God's promises? When? Never. But we cannot let it go. Strong in the Lord. You have an unction on the inside of you. That unction is the same as word as the anointing. Same word. The unction to rise up. I just speak that over this house. That we're a force and that we pray and the mountains the mountains are moved the walls come crumbling and they, 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 they're no more an object the, dark, the enemy is scattered they run we don't sing songs about that we see it right in front of our eyes God again I pray for this nation I pray for our president God give him more boldness give him more uh, 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 courage clarity of thought Hearing your voice, put protection around him. Put people around him, God, that will give him truth, will give him strength that he can trust. Tear down this, this abomination of betrayal, this abomination of, 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 of carnality and the, the, to appease the flesh and the sin of man. Remove of God. I pray that you remove the darkness out of our land that when we'll have 
more and more people saying, I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to be a believer in America. I'm proud of the church that's raised up in America to go around the world. Everybody say this with me. Father God, you died for my sin. You sent Jesus and took it all away. And just like communion today, with your stripes, I am healed. And your blood covers a multitude of sin. I receive you, Jesus, today to be my Lord, that I will follow you, and I desire to be provoked unto good works and to live in love. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. God's good, isn't he? God is so good. Listen, tonight we do have a class, a healing class. We're seeing incredible things happen. Starts at 7 o'clock. Is it 7? 6 o'clock. And, and so, praise the Lord. Now, encourage who all can. We're going to pull all this carpet up. And next Sunday, you'll see all new stuff. Isn't that great? Great. Testimony of good church. All right. Let's all stand on our feet. And uh, we're going to get going on this thing. And then later on, they're going to bring pizza in. It's going to be great. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you just prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. It is so important to us to see you grow in your walk with the Lord, and we have materials that can help you do that. Also, if you have any prayer requests in any area of your life, we have a mighty team of prayer warriors who would like to come alongside you in those requests. You can submit those requests to the church office. The number is 924-4888, or submit them by email at info at scc-spokane.org. Please remember, join us Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on live stream and every Sunday at 10 a.m. in the building or on live stream. Have a blessed day.